Survey of Calculus, Chapter 4, Section 4, Properties of Definite Integrals. Our first property is actually a theorem, and it says that for x values a, c, and b, where c is between a and b, the integral from a to b, which is the whole thing, is the integral from a to c plus c to b. And it kind of makes sense if you look at the picture. If you take the area from a to c and add it to the area from c to b, you get the whole integral, and that's really just what the theorem says. So for example, we're going to do the area under the graph of this piecewise function from negative 4 to 5. Now, the function equals 9 up until x equals 3, and then it's x squared from 3 on. So you're going to do the integral from negative 4 to 3 of 9, and you're going to add that to the integral from 3 to 5 for x squared. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. Here's what it looks like. Um, you could do it as a, a trapezoid, or, as we said before, do it as two integrals added together. And, let's see. We get 95 and 2 thirds. Now try this one, same idea. Pause the recording, give it a go, and resume to check your answer. And following all that, you get 27 and 2 thirds. Now suppose we wanna find the area of a region bounded by the graphs of two functions like these here. We have f and we have g. And notice neither of them are touching the x-axis. Not that important, but what we can do is we can find the area under f, which would be from the blue line down to the x-axis. We could find the area under g, which would be from the red curve down to the x-axis, and then subtract the two. And that would leave you with the shaded region. So, this gives us a theorem. Let f and g be continuous functions where f of x is greater than g of x. Now, what that means is f of x is physically above g of x. The y values for f of x for matching x's are higher than g of x. So f of x is on top. We're going from the x values a to b. The area of the region between the two curves is basically the integral of the difference of these two functions. So you're going to do the integral from f of x minus g of x. And again, it's really important to be aware which function is higher than the other, because that's the one you want to go first. Okay, now we're gonna do an example. Uh, we're gonna do the area of the region bounded by these two graphs. You're gonna need to graph them to see which is on top. You also need a starting and a stopping point, an x value that you're going to start and stop. And unless given to you otherwise, most of the time it's going to be the intersection of these graphs. So you need to figure out where these two graphs meet because that's going to be your starting and your ending point, And you need to know which is higher than the other. So pause the recording, give this a try and resume to check your answer. Okay, so setting them equal to zero, we find they meet at zero and two. And again, I do suggest you graph it. It's, it's a lot nicer. Here's the visual. Okay, and we see that f of x is greater than g of x. Uh, if you're not sure, just pick an x value and then look at g and look at f, which one is higher, um, which y value is higher for that x value. So we're going to do the integral from zero to two. It's going to be 2x plus one minus x squared plus 1. Now, look how the minus is going to get distributed in. Simplifying, we get the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x minus x squared dx. And then you just do what we've been doing. And you should get 4 thirds. Okay, now we've got four graphs here. And I'll give you a little hint. Don't get too uptight about them. Um, the first two are the ones that we're going to be using in our integral. The other two, x equals 1 and x equals 3, those really just give us our left and right boundaries, so that's, we're going to be integrating from 1 to 3. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. OK, 
Okay, so here's what it looks like. So you've got f, you've got g, and then, like I said before, the x equals 1 and x equals 3 just gives us um, the boundaries for that area. So instead of going to the intersection points, we're just doing it from x equals 1 to 3. Notice that the um, 40 minus x squared is above the red graph, above the bigger, the more complicated function. So we're going to be subtracting um, 40 minus x squared minus the second function, which looks like this, and simplify it. And take the integral or antiderivative and then put in 3 and 1, subtract 97.6. Now let's try a, an application problem. A college student develops an engine that is believed to meet all state standards for emission control. The rate is given by E of t equals 2t squared, where E of t is emissions. Suppose the emission rate of a conventional engine is given by C of t equals 9 plus t squared. And we have the two graphs. So you see that the conventional engine, um, for the most part, has a higher rate of emissions up to a point. Uh, to about three years of use. At what point in time will the emission rates be the same? So I said about three years, you really, what you're going to do is set the two equations equal and solve and find for sure what that T is and what reduction in emissions results with the student's engine up to the time found in part A. So find the time where they meet at part A. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the integral of C of T minus E of T from 0 to that time you found in A. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Setting them equal to 0, we get t equals 3 or negative 3. Negative 3 has no meaning because it's um, a time, and time is not negative. So when I said it's about 3 years, I called that pretty, pretty well there. It did look like 3, and it was 3. But you should always check. Part B. We're going to integrate from 0 to 3. We're going to do C of t because it's on top minus E of t. Please watch for the minus there. And so we have 9 minus t squared. Taking the antiderivative, we get 9t minus t to the third over 3. And then evaluating, those at, uh, evaluating that at 3 and 0, we get 18. So over three years, the engine reduces emissions by 18 billion pollution particulates. Okay, we also have what's called the average value of a function. It says let f be a continuous function over a, b. Its average value, which is symbolized by y with a little sub a, v for average, over a, b is given by 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x. So in other words, you're going to take the integral from a to b, and you're going to multiply it by 1 minus b over a. So let's see how it works. Find the average value of x squared over 0 to 2. Pause the recording, see if you can follow the, the definition we just had, and resume to check your answer. So it's going to be 1 over 2 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx, which gives us 1 half times x to the third over 3, and we're doing it from 0 to 2. And putting all that in, we get 1 and 1 third. Risk of speed in miles per hour, t minutes after entering the freeway, is given by this function. From 5 minutes after entering the freeway to 25 minutes, what is its average speed? So from 5 to 25, how far does he travel in that time interval? Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, so here we have his graph. Um, we're going 1 minus 25 over 5, or 1 over 25 minus 5, excuse me, times the integral of um, the function from 5 to 25. And here you see we've taken the antiderivative. So it'd be 1 20th times that antiderivative evaluated from 5 to 25. And we just need to work it out. Um, it's kind of a long problem, sorry about that. Got to put in the 25 and the 5, and we get, finally, 68 and 3 quarter miles per hour. So find out how far he travels. Note that T is given in minutes, not hours. Uh, so 20 minutes is a third of an hour. So multiply his speed by one third, and you get that he has gone 22 and 11 twelfths miles. 
This is a summary of what we just discussed. Pause the recording and look over this and then resume to do some practice problems. Okay, the rest of this recording consists of additional practice problems. So if you will, um, as we go through this, if you'll pause the recording, give them a try and resume to check your answer. I do want to make a comment on this first one. Notice that which function is on top shifts. At first, we have g, uh, f of x on top. And then they switch position, and g of x is the upper function. So what you need to do, I've given you a hint here, is to break this into two integrals. You're going to do the integral from negative 5 to negative 1 of f of x minus g of x, and you're going to add that to the integral from negative 1 to 3 of g of x minus f of x. You need to do it this way, otherwise it's not going to come out correct. So... Um, Make sure you do that. Break it into two integrals, like we just said, and then that'll get you the correct answer. All right, pause the recording as you go through these. Check your answer. Uh, resume it to check your answer and continue this way through the rest of the recording.